Everybody, welcome to a championship edition of Rumors versus Facts. We don't really have a championship for us, but there's a championship going on after this game or after the show. So we're going to try to get in and out on our recruiting show. We say that every week, and we always wind up talking for like an hour because there's a lot going on. But uh, there was a lot going on this past week. We normally would have had a live uh, commitment watch party for maybe you know Mason Short or you know, maybe uh, Mr. Zollers. Jed May had to go off and do some stupid crap with his brother. So, yeah, man, I tweeted uh, Mason Short's commitment story from the T box as we were about to tee off for the bachelor party. So, uh, you know, so it's, good, it's good to work at UJ Sports. You won. That's what matters. And, uh, and you know, Jordan getting a commitment was a bonus. So, uh, yeah, but like what Zollers was at three o'clock and, and Mason was at nine ish on Friday morning. So, a busy what, 24 hours pretty much on the uh, recruiting front. One good, one not so good. Who picked their time first? It was... uh, I think it was Zollers. Cause his, had been, his had been 3 o'clock for a couple weeks. I want so to there's the off chance that Kirby Smart wouldn't get a commit on Thursday. Friday morning, he had a commit. Yep. Mm-hmm. I also got it. There's two big names going back-to-back in – you're not sure about the first one. You could be damn sure George is getting the second one. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hey, yep. yeah, that's that's Kirby for you, man. I'm not saying he set it up, but he set it up. Anyway, Kirby Smart uh, did not get his quarterback. You guys, give me your thoughts on Zollers uh, picking Missouri. I know a lot of people. There was one guy went on the dog on the vault. He's like, "Why won't anybody pick where this kid's going? Why don't you go out on a limb?" I'm like, "The kid doesn't freaking know." Yeah, so it would be an absolute guess and. The way it was told to me was he came into the Georgia visit, again, only his second visit. We talked last week. We said if he commits after just two visits, that's unique in the whole situation. But I was told he came in as a uh, a Missouri lean, like 80-20. And when he left, it was like 60-40. Georgia jumped up really into the heart of it. But I want you guys, y'all are the recruiting guys. But folks that don't know, it's Jed May, Trent Smallwood, and Lance McCauley, uh, McCurley. So, me give, me, give me your thoughts about uh, the whole uh, Zoller situation. I feel yeah, like you said nobody, nobody really knew um, until, I mean, it, it seemed like it, it really kind of started to be finalized on Thursday, like around noonish. But even still, like you know, I had you mentioned how low key it was. Roddy I had one source tell me that he did a good job keeping his cards close to the vest, uh, pretty much with everybody. Like I don't think the schools knew. We were talking with. Uh, Gabe DeArmond, our Missouri guy, he said Missouri didn't know, Georgia didn't know. Um, I, I would assume Penn State and Pitt didn't know. Like I don't, I don't think anybody really had a good grasp on this thing until the last couple hours before. So yeah, Kirby Smart and then they they gave it a good run. They didn't offer him until I think late January, and then he visited right after that, and then like you said, came back on April second, which was the last visit. You like your chances when um, when when you do get that last visit, but in the end, it just um, it, uh, it wasn't enough. It was right down to the wire. It was really close. I do think George came in second right behind Missouri. Um, but ultimately, he uh, he chose to be a Tiger. So now it's uh, – you know, there, there was all the debate. You know, it's would Georgia take dollars with Juju Lewis still out there? And now it it, uh, it doesn't really matter because uh, we're, we're right back to the all-in on the Juju <laughs> Lewis sweepstakes again. So, Trent? Yeah, I, I think – uh, you know, talking to Gabe and and he was supposed to talk to Missouri, I think, at 2 Eastern um, before his announcement. So I don't think Missouri really had a definite answer till right around that point. So you're, you're looking at about an a hour or so before his announcement. So uh, he kind of left both, both schools in the dark. Um, and, you know, he, 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 he played it close, uh, you know, to his family. I'm not even sure uh, him and his family, he, he mentioned that he made his decision that morning. So uh, – so that that that's interesting uh, in itself, and it just kind of shows you how close Georgia uh, got this. But I'd always said if Miz- what Missouri uh, had, had you know kind of lacked, they they had a bunch of playmakers, and it was a uh, you know a legit quarterback. And um, I think Zowers is is you know one of if if not the the top quarterback in the country um, from a potential standpoint. So it was a, it was a big get from Missouri. Lance, a lot of people said, well, he doesn't want to come here because he thinks that they might go get Juju Lewis. Yeah. I didn't get that vibe from him. But mm-hmm. That's you know, just reading between the lines. I didn't speak to him during this whole thing. You guys did. Uh, but he told Jed, hey, they're taking one quarterback. 
Yeah. So did he not believe that? Did he think that one quarterback means I'm the guy until they get Juju? I mean, I mean you're, I, there's a lot of rampant speculation, and that, the whole point of this show is called Rumors versus Facts. We're trying to wade through the rumors, come up with some actual facts. And, I mean, the kid went on the record saying they're only going to take one QB. I mean, uh, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I mean, it's is it is it like, hey, they said, you know, maybe on Tuesday, hey, commit now, but, you know, we're still going to accurately recruit. Uh, you know, Juju Lewis, did, did that happen? Um, I'm not saying it did, but – I mean, it's 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 definitely a possibility. Um, and you know, if you're Matt Zoller's, like, you know what, you know what do you, you know what do you, you know what do you say at that point? Because obviously, you know, you're there two days before your commitment. And what if you did hear that? I don't know how you know that would make me feel as a recruit. So, you know, that is a possibility. But I mean, it's Missouri. I I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Um, you know, I mean, they've been, they've been getting some good players in the last, you know, few cycles. And, uh, you know, I don't think that, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't think the drink ones is a bad coach, but, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are saying, you know, come get developed, you know, by Kirby and stuff like that. But I mean, drink ones, you know, he's had some good quarterbacks over the years. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, like Trent said, them having, you know, that last conversation may have, uh, you know, kind of solidified it leading up to, uh, his recruitment. I like to think about this. The, you know, you didn't the, – the, the comment there from uh, uh, Jason Cancel, I didn't hear about Missouri until with Zoller still later in the game. Penn State and Pitt were the two I'd heard. Yeah, because he had a brother at Pitt, and Penn State's a lot closer. Uh, Georgia's in it because they're a two-time national championship, and people think Missouri. Well, you didn't think about Missouri with Luther Burden. You didn't think about Missouri with Williams Nwanri. And I love Gabe over at our Missouri site, Power Mizzou, is one of the best sites out there kind of the only site that really covers Missouri football, but again, he's a big J journalist, you know, at a good journalism school, second best to Georgia. So uh, they, they can suck on that. Uh, there's a lot of, it's a long story. He, the, one of the first things he said was Missouri's NIL has changed the game. Mm -hmm. And it has. Now I'm not saying that Matt Zollers took a bunch of dollars. You know, I love how his coach came out and said, it's Zollers like dollars. I'm like, Oh, on the crazy. nose, man. It's on the nose. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. But I, I didn't. That was also not something that we heard about. We we normally when we hear about the back and forth with here's X amount of dollars. These guys came in with Y. These guys came in with a Y plus ten percent, and we kind of hear that back and forth. That's not what I heard. Trent, Jed, Lance, anybody else hear any of that? Because it didn't sound to me like this was a, a dollar issue. But you got to think that it puts them on equal footing, even though you don't. He, Trequas has had some good players, but he doesn't have two titles. Hell, he doesn't even have an SEC championship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, your finalists, I mean, you look at the four finalists, Georgia is, is uh, you know, infamously maybe a school that doesn't give a whole bunch of NIL money to freshmen. Penn State, I don't think, is, is really in that realm, and neither is Pitt. So, obviously, Missouri won. But if this was an NIL thing, you'd have seen the more uh, traditional NIL you know, powers, I guess, be the finalist. Instead of Penn State, you would see Miami. Instead of Pitt, you'd see, you know, maybe an A&M, an Oregon, uh, somebody like that. So, hell, Ohio State, the way they're throwing money around. So, um, I don't think NIL was the ultimate decision, but like you said, Roddy, when you have Missouri kind of getting into the race with the offense they have and the playmakers they have and things like that, then NIL could be that thing that, that kind of takes them over the top when you compare them to a Georgia or a Penn State. Or at least gets yeah. them in the conversation. Yeah, I don't think yeah. NIL was, was the main, uh, I guess, um, thing in this recruitment. It, it was more so, I, from what I've heard, what I believe is it was more so uh, what Georgia's brought in, what Georgia has coming, and it's the competition that he's going to face. Uh, that, you know, he, you're going to have competition wherever you go. But it's going to be a whole lot easier to see the field uh, at Missouri than it is Georgia from a competition standpoint. From a couple guys being in front of you, um, you know, when when you get here, um, having that 2026 quarterback they just landed, um, j just just the overall, um, uh, you know, the room itself, I think, uh, did not work in Georgia's favor. Um, you know, most of these quarterbacks are not scared of competition, but they all and they say that. 
and that's that's a more of a you know a power boost in their ego kind of thing. But uh, they do look at the room, and uh, when you see a room like Georgia has uh, at the quarterback position. Um, and then compare it to Missouri, and you have that kind of same kind of feeling towards both schools, and you're comfortable with both schools. Uh, sometimes it wins out where, where it's easier to get on the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, your, to your point, I did hear uh, from somebody within UJ. They said, look, uh, may, and the, this was speculation on their point. They said, maybe it's just competition. And to your point, yeah, you're not, he's not scared of it. Uh, I never, you never struck me as being worried about it. But when you look at Ryan Puglisi and Jared Curtis, and you're, you're the sandwich. Between those two, that's freaking tough. You know, I mean, yeah. you're a good quarterback, but I can go somewhere else. I know I can play. I know mm-hmm. I'm the man. I know that. And to uh, Chris Foster there with the T, he says, "Yeah, well, once a year they kind of go in all all on one player, which is exactly what we predicted three years ago on this very damn show. We said, look, some of these teams are not going to be able to do what Georgia does and get a bunch of five stars, but they can get one. And that's the one guy that you were focusing on that you were trying to get." We saw it happen right off the bat with Luther Burton. Okay, well, they're not getting 13 other pieces like that. Georgia is getting 13, 14, five-star, four, high four-star guys. You know, but nobody else is doing that. But if each of these other schools gets one, 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 you'll have a situation where nobody's signing three, four, five, five-stars anymore. Everybody's getting one. And local kid, yeah, I get that. So uh, this one, if you're trying to go between, you got to follow Ryan Puglisi. And then you got Jared Curtis nipping at your heels, and Curtis is really, really good. He's going to be a, you know, do we, do we dare call him the next Juju Lewis? You know, just kind of a uh, a guy that everybody's watching. I can just see Zollers going, nah, I can go somewhere else. It's a little bit easier. So, just a, a quick thought there. Uh, got to get it off his guard. He works at it, and it's Juju or bust. True. I like this one up from Goat Dog. UGA basketball transfer portal notifications rivals are scaring the hell out of me. I keep thinking they're talking about football when they come through. Yeah, yeah hey, you got uh, what is today? You got one week. I was going to say, I was going to say the football ones are coming. Just uh, yeah. not necessarily yeah. today, but they will be. Uh, they'll be in full force in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. Yeah, you got well, you got one week there, uh, Goat Dog. Before the, you might turn your phone off and just see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, Jermaine King says, please direct all of your super chats tonight to the Classic City Collective. I was approached about having Kirby Smart come on our show, and all every super chat that was done would go to the Classic City Collective. I said, hell yeah. <laughs> we'll be happy to do that. If people want to hit that super chat, we'll mark each one of them and send them directly. I, we can have Kirby on and say, look, you want to ask him a question? It's 500 bucks. Every 500 bucks you get, you can pepper, you can ask him a question. You can go right to the heart of. Uh, Ask him about a play at uh, Alabama, Georgia versus Alabama. Thousand bucks, you can get him to answer two questions or something like that. Maybe that's Why a question. Hell, you run that tall sweep lift. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why do you pull James Cook when he's just getting warmed up? That, that would be mine. <laughs> James is just getting frothy, and we we snatch him out of there. Uh, but I anyway, do. Let's talk, let's uh, switch gears here and talk about. In fact, okay. George's not getting Zollers. What about Juju Lewis or Ryan Montgomery? Who who are they who the, who are they getting? Are they taking a quarterback in this group? They gotta be taking at least one. I don't know, man. I've I've been firmly like in the camp that I I just I haven't gotten myself to to talk myself into Julian Lewis coming to Georgia yet. I just I I can't cross that bridge. But I did put in my my end of spring reset today. I think Georgia's probably in the best the, the top contender to flip him um just with the relationships how many times he's visited you know we've, we've gone over this a million times but I just I don't know and the thing is you know Julian Lewis says he wants to be decided uh before the season like one way or another it's going to go to to sign a day no matter what I think Ryan Montgomery over this the, I guess over the weekend comes out and says hey I'm not doing the whole summer official visit thing anymore. I'm going to commit, I think, early May and then take one official visit to whoever I commit to. So now if you're Georgia, you're like, you're you're probably not going to, you know, green light Montgomery. I wouldn't think if you haven't by now. So he will most likely end up at Florida or South Carolina. And so then you're really all in on Juju. And if you don't get him, if it comes through, do you try to get, 
do you flip Montgomery late? Maybe do you try to get a camp offer guy, a late, uh, a senior late bloomer guy, and and like you said, Roddy, have them be that bridge to uh, to the Jared Curtis coming in in twenty twenty six. I don't know, but you know, we said even when Matt Zollers was in it, there's a chance Georgia can maybe get two of these three guys, and there's a chance they get zero. Yeah. And I just, you know, that that zero, I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it's, you know, super likely, but I just, I don't, I don't know. I personally can't get myself to cross that bridge that Juju Lewis is going to be a bulldog. Not yet. I, I think a lot yeah. has to do with, with the progression of Ron Puglisi. Um, with the, the 26 quarterback you just added, um, and, and having those two guys, um, so I think I think you go Juju or uh, or like you said a camp offer um, because you, you put yourself in a situation where you don't have to land necessarily a high caliber guy if it's not who you want you can go to a, a you know a, a guy that's a like you said camp offer or a guy that's um, kind of off the radar not on everybody's radar and you have Curtis in your back pocket for twenty six and then. Puglisi, you know, in this past class. Um, so I think Georgia sits in a good position in the quarterback room. Of course, you want to take one every year, at least one every year. But they're not in a situation where they have to land one of the top guys. Uh, I think that, you know, that that kind of eased that pressure with, with Landon Curtis in the 26th class mm-hmm. and, you know, the progression of Puglisi. Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there a scenario where, you know, you don't end up you know, with both. And, you know, like you said, you got to go look for, you know, a guy that's kind of under the radar or, you know, I've had, I've had people, you know, kind of ask me the same question just out in public and just online. And, you know, is, is a guy like Lou nickel at Milton high school, right down the road. Is that, is that a name that, that you go after? And, you know, even though he's committed to Miami, he's been committed to Miami for a while, but I mean, he's, I mean, he's, I assume, I assume just uh, we're talking to him after the state championship game that, you know, he says Georgia still contacts him. You know, is that so, is that something that kind of that communication, is that still there? Is it from every now and then or does it pick up, um, you know, if if they end up not landing, landing a Juju or Ryan Montgomery? I think you've got you've got the talent or you you've got the status. You're the University of freaking Georgia. Go for Juju. If you don't get him. Tell him. Put out a note. Hey, we need a, a transfer portal quarterback. Mm-hmm. You don't have to pick a guy, but if Kirby said that in press conference, yeah, we're going to look in the portal for a transfer quarterback. There are going to be like six top guys. They're like Kirby Smart, the head coach of the two-time defending national champions, who could have almost been the three-time defending champions who were back in the playoffs this year. They, they they're looking for a transfer quarterback. You know, because sometimes you don't know where you're going. I'm well, just saying you can do that, and again, you you hold out for a top guy. And something that that is is factoring into the pitch to these guys now, like Jared Curtis brought this up. He said, "Yeah, the pitch is you come to Georgia, you're going to play with the best offensive linemen, the best receivers, the best running backs." So when you're talking about transfer portal guys, those are guys who have already, you know, in most cases, exhausted some of their eligibility, so they don't want to go somewhere and be part of a a rebuild, so to speak. They want to go to a team that is you know, quote unquote, a quarterback away. And, and that might be a little bit dramatic to say Georgia would be in that position next year, but they would be going to a team that is, I guess, ready-made where you could step in and be part of a successful team right away. So that's going to, like you said, Roddy, top guys would be, uh, you know, falling all over themselves to be to be trying to get to Georgia to be a part of a team that's that's got so much talent around them, a quarterback. Only problem is top guys demand top money. Yep. But hey, if they've got the money to get Juju, then they've got they've got it somewhere. So whatever whatever plans you're putting in effect to do that, maybe you go out and get a, uh, a transfer portal quarterback again. I don't know. Uh, there's got to be a guy that's just tired as hell of being hit because he's got a very porous offensive line. I'm, I'm thinking about like Trevor Etienne, the offensive line he was running behind versus running behind this offensive line. He's got to be thinking, man, there's, there's gaps. I'm not getting hit by behind the line of scrimmage. It's, I get to follow Micah Morris's big ass through that B gap. Well, and, and, uh, there was a lot of critique on ETN's blocking, and would you? But when you have Georgia's offensive line, you can go 
run routes instead of sitting there <laughs> blocking. I mean, you ain't yeah. gotta be a six blocker or a seventh blocker, and you you can go run routes. So that you know, he he caught a lot of he caught a lot of um, critiques from from the Florida fans about well, he can't block. Well, he ain't gonna be blocking much at Georgia. He's gonna be he's gonna be going out for screens and going out for passes and and so that's, that. that's a great point. You remember when I started a long time ago, the weekly tweet about tight ends. It's always one of them to use the tight ends. And I actually had a Georgia offensive line coach turn to me and go, we got to use them to block, Roddy. I know you want to throw to them, but we don't, we can't block for shit. Didn't quite say it that way, but it was a variation therein. He's like, this play, we have to have him stay in. You know, and so you bring in some guys who are really good pass catchers, but they had to be inline blockers a lot because they just couldn't do it. Now, all of a sudden, Georgia has a Broderick Jones, you know, a Jamari Sawyer, you know, a Warren McClendon, Andrew Thomas. And now those guys are able to go out for passes. Fun times, fun times. All right, so I do like the fact that they're not jerking uh, Ryan Montgomery around. Hey, commit, and we're going to keep going after Juju in the background, and once he commits, we're going to cut you loose. I think that would just be a, a, a jerk move, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, they, it, it sounds like the, the honesty has been there. It's just yeah. at a certain point – you, you gotta there's there's gotta be a yes or no black and white answer to this. Can I commit or not? Yeah. I think I think if if that question was posed to Michael Owen Kirby Smart tomorrow, they'd say no. And you know, it is what it is. You you if you want to go in all, all in on Juju, that's fine, but you 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 run the risk of a a talented guy like Ryan Montgomery going somewhere else. And then and then if, if they you know if Georgia misses on Juju and you come knocking on Ryan Montgomery's door in September or October. He could be like, yeah, you know what? You didn't want me then. I, I'm good. I, I found a place that has been prioritizing me for a long time. I'm I'm good. I'm gonna stick it out here. So I don't know. It's like I said. There's there's definitely a definitely a scenario where Georgia doesn't get any of these these top three guys, and then you're you're looking, you know, yeah. camp offer, senior guy, portal, multiple. Hey, well, well, like like Jason says, there just pull Arch from Texas. <laughs> sure. Yeah, like you said, portal opens next week. I want yeah. another arch recruitment. Let's go. I mean, you know he's dialed in because he's not going to be in the video game next year. Yeah, that's true. So, ah, yeah, he, uh, there you go. I love it. He's just, hey, uh, size says you know, he was saying Georgia needs to get a, a top defensive tackle, and he does. And that we've, but he brings up a good point because yes, Georgia doesn't have the same you know Jordan Davis's, uh, Demonte Wyatt's, Jalen Carter's, Trayvon Walker's. You just don't have that absolute difference maker. But those guys. There's just not a lot of them in the portal. So we're talking about, oh, yeah, well, Georgia can just go to the portal for a top quarterback. Well, could we say the same thing about a top defensive talent, or, you know, defensive end, defensive lineman, and they just may not be there. So mm-hmm. I, I like getting I your uh, guy early. And uh, Mr. Israel says you're not getting Juju. See, Jed, you're just you're killing it for everybody. Yeah, everybody right? yeah. Maybe they do. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying me personally, I yeah. haven't been able to 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 talk myself into it yet. I just I haven't got there. They might get there. I might get there, but I don't know. I Georgia did get a commit last week. Let's talk about Mason Short. That was the one I really wanted to have the kind of uh, live show where we kind of count down to his commitment. And I that was a fun commitment to watch. I was watching the streaming from his school and. Uh, his mom just about tearing up, you know, just so happy, so proud of him. Uh, that, that that was just a very touching moment, you know. She seems like a very nice lady. Uh, give me your thoughts on Mason Short, guys. Yeah, well, he visited, you know, he de- decommitted from Alabama on the week of the save and stuff, and since then, Georgia seemed like the favorite. I think it was either one of you guys, Lance or Trent, put in a future cast for him not long after that happened, and it, it okay. ended up being – uh, and they're coming true. Clemson made it real interesting, but you know the, the relationships with Stacey Serials, Kirby Smart, uh, the proximity to Athens. Uh, you know Clemson's pretty close too, but um, just it, it all went out in the end. And he had a great story about he took kind of a a secret visit to Athens for practice. I guess two weeks ago now, and um, you know he said, "Hey, I just want to come watch practice." The coaches thought it was weird, and then told Kirby, and Kirby you know tackled him, and it was it was a whole. Uh, it, it was a good story. And Why Kirby tackling? They uh, do what? What did you say, Roddy? You said Kirby tackled him because he visited practice. 
No, because he committed. He committed while he was on the visit. Yeah. So he left out that part. Yeah. Tate Rattledge, you know, gave him a big hug. And it was it was a good thing. And it's it's another case where Georgia didn't give up on him while he was committed to Alabama, which I think was it, it was a wasn't quite a year, but it was, it was a pretty long time. And um at, as soon as as soon as the uh as the saving stuff came down, Georgia put themselves in great position for it. And what I guess three months later they uh, they got his commitment. So first offensive line piece. And uh, it's a big one. Uh, talented guy and an in-state guy on top of that. I, I think this was in the works before Saban retired. Yeah, um, for sure. There was, there well, was why, did you put in a, why did you put in a future cast so early? You were the first one to do it. Well, because uh, I think this was in the works before Saban. And uh, uh, there, there was a – he was on campus a lot. And mm-hmm. he, yeah. uh, there, there's certain prospects he, he, we follow the visits. And yeah. when, when you get on campus and you're continuing to build those relationships, and then when all the Alabama stuff went down with Saban and uh, new coaching staff, it was just kind of a, I mean, in in my eyes, and in, in from what I've heard, it was just kind of a, a, a smooth transition to where it, it, you know, it took a while for it to happen, for, it to, for, for him to actually commit. Uh, I do know – um, Matt Luke was in his ear at, at Clemson, and then you know, it was, but I, I, at the end of the day, I think relationships won it over, and I think all that was stemming from you know the relationships built before he was decommitted from Alabama while Saban was still coaching because there was probably uh, two or three he visited for a game. He visited uh, you know during uh, when when you could visit uh, in December. Um, it, there were s- several visits that he took, probably five plus. Uh, over a four or five month span. So, um, uh, w- when he decommitted, uh, you know, Georgia was right there to to take charge in that recruitment. I've never spoken to Mason, but I, I kind of like the quote that he gave Jed. It was like, "I'm not, you know, I'm not. This isn't a pony show or something, mm-hmm. something like that." <laughs> like he he actually, you know, when he when he saw Georgia practice, you know, I mean, he. He liked the intensity of it. You know, he didn't like – and, you know, with Georgia, that relationship, you know, kind of started early in it, and it was established. And like Trent said, you know, I think this was going back way before he he committed to uh, – or he decommitted from Alabama because he was – you know, that on, that picture right there I think is one of the only ones we've got of him um, that I took at one, of the ga- at one of the games. And it just looked like he was enjoying himself at that game. And then next thing you know, you just, you, you just start hearing all this – you know, kind of buzz, you know, is Mason Short going to stick with Alabama? Is Mason Short going to, when's he going to decommit from Alabama and flip? And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, Georgia getting in there, you know, early on in his recruitment and continuing to keep that relationship going, uh, you know, helped a lot. Where does he play? That's I mean, he, he, he's, he's a really carbon good. copy, apparently, of uh, Tate Rattledge, but Tate was yeah, recruited he, as a tight end. He's as a tackle. I mean, he's 6'7", he's tall. Um, I, I, if you made me bet, I would bet he ends up at guard. Now, granted, that could depend on, you know, who else you get in this class. Like if you get a David Sanders and, uh, say, Josh Peck, then, you know, maybe you, you put him at guard from day one. If you don't get those guys, maybe you try him, uh, at tackle, see how it goes. Maybe you end up moving him at guard anyway. So the comparison is Tate Rattledge. That's like been hammered home a million times. Obviously, Tate Rattledge has has mostly been a guard at Georgia, so we'll see. Um, he he said he's very athletic. The staff likes his feet. Um, so that's step one, I guess. But uh, but we'll see. He did say he's enrolling early, so he'll have next spring. I'm sure will be a time where they kind of try him at a couple of different spots and see uh, see where he might end up. Guess, where do you put him? Trent? More or less next fall. Um, I'm going to say uh, he's going to cross train between guard and right tackle. Uh, I think you're going to see um, – but what you've seen a lot of that in the past with Georgia players, um, it, you, you saw uh, Xavier Trust do it last year. Um, you, you've seen Jamari Salyer do it. I mean, they've done it a lot over the past years. So I think you're going to see him cross train a lot. Um, I think he ends up at guard, like you said, but but I think it all depends on what – does Georgia get in a situation where they – at tackle where they have a – Injured tackle and 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 he has the capability of, of moving out to guard. Uh, he, he definitely has that um, uh, working for him. So I, I just think he brings you 
um, a versatile guy that can play. Uh, I mean, I think he, you could honestly shift him out to left tackle, and I don't think he's going to kill you. Um, but I don't think he that is his best position um, moving forward. I think it's going to be right tackle or guard. Um, I'd pencil him in at guard, but uh, he does have the potential to play tackle. Uh, he's a little bit of a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, I can see that. And he said he's played all five positions on the line uh, in high school as well. So Give me a six, six and a half center. <laughs> Uh, that, cool. that would be awesome. Freaking <laughs> giant standing over the ball. Imagine Stetson, Stetson trying to hike it from him. Hey, I, 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 I thought big men couldn't play uh, center that as well, and then we saw Trey Hill get out there. Yeah. Oh, thunder thighs. I'm like, the ball won't get through there. They got to do a great job at uh, My thoughts on him real quick. Watching, watching the film there, great feet, can move. Good feet, like it. Uh, but I can also see them saying, we need a guy with a longer wingspan. Mm -hmm. A guy with more reach, especially with, you know, those seven, nine techniques come flying off the edge. You know, mm -hmm. They want guys with really long arms. I, we, I need I need to get him on that uh, thing at the rival's camp where the test got mm -hmm. and check it out. I'd like to get a, a reading on that and see. It's, it has a lot to do with it. You know, we talk about height and weight. You know, we don't always talk about the fact that sometimes it's – Wingspan and feet, you know, that is what it is. I uh, real quick, who's gonna who's gonna visit this weekend? So we were looking at some of the uh, uh, guys that we talked about the stuff that happened last week. This is a big week. G Day's coming this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, well, this well, is the make or break. And we had a great story on the front page today of UJSports.com going back to 2016. You guys remember the 93K Day? Kirby Smart comes out. And Auburn, or the Arkansas basketball, Georgia versus Arkansas, and challenges everybody to fill up the stands. I want 93,000 people in the seats. We did stories on that forever because every kid was like, we had 93,000 people mm -hmm. come out. I mean, it just it changed the game. And then you look at that class that he signed, they won two national titles. So they're not going to be 93,000 this year, but. I know the G Day will be a very vanilla game. He's not Kirby doesn't want to give anything away. It's gotten progressively more and more vanilla every year. Yeah. Uh, but from the list of people who are in the stands, that gets more and more exciting every year. It's, it's more of a who's who each year, irrespective of what other teams are running a big uh, spring game. They've gone, Georgia's gone head to head with Alabama, they've gone head to head with. Ohio State, Florida, Tennessee, Texas, it doesn't matter. They Georgia gets its share of big names. So who are the big names coming? Yeah, there's a ton of spring games this weekend, by the way. Um, you know, a lot of the commits will be in town, uh, as you'd expect. As far as uncommitted guys, Travis Smith will be there, priority receiver target, second visit of the spring. Zyke Helton, who, you know, we had the story on Georgia's leader, 2026 center, uh, noted USC Trojan Justice Terry is going to be in town and he was I don't know, was it last weekend or weekend before where he was supposed to visit and it got rescheduled to this weekend so easter weekend yeah easter weekend yeah easter that's what it was so um he will be in town i'm sure friday afternoon until sunday late morning afternoon he will uh he he will will hear a lot from the coaches reminding him of, of why he committed to Athens, committed to georgia in the first place um <laughs> Aaron um, Ikenagbin, a priority edge guy from New Jersey, will be in town. Uh, you look at 2026, Jared Curtis will be here. Akini Ogboko, an offensive lineman from North Carolina, the brother of Namde Ogboko from 2024. It, Akini is like a stud. I don't know if he's a tackler or a guard, but a very highly thought of guy in that class. And, um, yeah, and that's just the beginning of the list. I mean, this is Monday, so we will uh, be building the list out throughout the week. You know, it wouldn't shock me if guy – Juan – Juan Gaston is expected to be there along with Travis Smith. It wouldn't shock me to see a guy like uh, CJ Wiley be back in town. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be a full full weekend for sure, which is, again, like you said, Roddy, is amazing because there are spring games all over the freaking country. Like I know Ohio State's having theirs. Um, maybe Alabama's having theirs. Like there's there's just a ton of them all this weekend. But Georgia's uh, going to have plenty of talent in the stands for sure. The Masters are having theirs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna have to miss Georgia spring game because I will be at the Masters. So. 
Yeah, uh, my my heart breaks for you. It, yeah. uh, I, I know, I know how broken hearted really you are. I, I weep. A tough life. Yeah. I will, I will, I will be sure to watch it. But no, you. Tape, tape delay. Tape I was going to say, watch it on what? Your phone's going to be in your car. Oh, yeah, yeah Jed was working from the golf course last week, so. Yeah, you got uh, room to talk. I wouldn't say that. I would, not once the round started, I would. <laughs> I teed off on one, man. That was that was uh, that was the end of the day. I did tweet from the tee box, though. So you know, was it the last G day that was that the time Bear? Uh, last flipped? year, yeah, it was last year. Yeah. We were we uh, we confirmed it. I was I saw it as I literally as I was walking to the press box uh, was when that kind of uh, kind of broke. So uh, yeah, that's a. That was fun. We'll see if uh, I don't guess that'll. I guess you could hear guys are will intend to go in the portal or whatever theoretically, but maybe we'll we'll see we'll see what kind of a uh, kind of fun comes on Saturday. Hi, right, Trent. Does uh, how big it's this weekend to try to get Justice Terry to flip back to Georgia? I think it's big. I mean, he's already got that. He's already got his official visit scheduled to Georgia. I think the the goal um, for Georgia is you're you're about to see him twice before USC sees him again, and because okay, I, I, so I, I don't see him, you know, making a trip out to USC before his official visit to Georgia, so uh, you're about to see him twice. This is going to be kind of the start of it, trying to final up, maybe try to finalize it, before, you know, that during his official visit and and before he goes out to USC, because um, I, I think. Uh, you know, if he if, if USC is scheduled to be his last official visit, you know he could have more after that, of course. But um, the last scheduled official visit right now, and I think Georgia would like to take these two visits and really show him why he was committed in the first place, his relationships with Georgia, um, and you know try to try to get him back on the commit list before he you know heads out west and uh, for his official visit at USC. That's a good good point. I didn't think about the fact that get him there. We, we I think it was Lance last week that was mentioning the fact that hey, you know he's just down the road. And yeah, I mean, okay, so Manchester's two hours from Athens. Uh, yeah. Pop up surprise visits, and of course the coaches within reason. I mean, there's only so many times you can actually go visit a guy, mm-hmm. but it'll be so much easier for five Georgia coaches to go by a Manchester high school game than. Yeah all the USC coaches yeah. and still be able to hit like three other kids, you know? So you go to Manchester, then you go right up uh, 17 and you're at Carrollton to see Juju Lewis and a couple other Carrollton guys. And maybe it's the, they're playing uh, a team that's got a couple kids on it, you know, and you're like, Hey, okay. So it'll be tough. It'll be, I mean, I can see a situation where he's like decommits and then basically leaves it open for a while. Then maybe he signs on signing day. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think he wants to be the kid that decommitted, flipped, you know, and then flipped it, flipped back. You know, I think it's usually you see a guy once he flips somewhere, he'll decommit for a while to survey all his options and then wind up recommitting. So, it's mm-hmm. reminds me of Michael Williams' uh, recruitment so much. Um, and this this is like to it uh, to a T. I mean, that you 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 had Georgia early, then you felt like Georgia was starting to. Uh, what we were told at the camps where Georgia was kind of not recruiting him as hard as he thought they should be committed to USC, but you always had that feeling that he was going to end up in Georgia's class uh, before signing day. And that's kind of the feeling you get with, with justice. So, you know, I can't say for sure that that's, that's what's going to happen. Uh, I, there'll be a lot of deciding factors in, in that, but um, you know, with his relationship with, with the going back to his trainer, tra- uh, training Trayvon Walker, who he's with all the time. And there's just a lot of ties there to the University of Georgia. And um, you know, that that I, I have a stronger confidence uh with, with Terry than I do with like Juju or, or the, the other guys. Um j- just just because of relationships and, and how far it goes back. Yeah, and the and the trend's point that Roger right up here on the screen says, you know, Eric Henderson's a good DL coach at USC. Well so is Trey Scott. Trey so is Trey Scott. And you look, you just mentioned Trayvon Walker, number one pick in the draft. Who was he coached by? He was coached by Trey Scott. You look at you look at Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, Devontae Wyatt, the list. Devontae know. Wyatt's the one. 
Yeah. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I love Devontae Wyatt. He's from where I spent my early part. I could walk to his, his, his high school from where I used to live in Decatur. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's not a great part of town. Um, that guy came in with a, not a whole lot of fan, fanfare, but we can tell he's an athlete. You remember watching him line up in the backfield and run the ball. You know, he's a good athlete. And with an extra year of development, turned him into a first round pick. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. Don't get me wrong. I think that uh, Anderson's a great wherever coach. Carter went, <laughs> first round pick. He could have gone to St. Louis Tech, first round pick, no question. But what you did with uh, Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt, that's a one-two punch. And again, I'm nothing against uh, Eric Anderson. The man, yeah. he, he's got what, Aaron Donald to his credit, and he could say, yeah. "Look, I was just in the. I know what they're looking for. Come yeah. play for me, and I'll get you that. I know who to call." So it's it's a it's a hell of a sales pitch, but I should probably move Henderson, the defense coordinator. <laughs> good point. Uh, that's a good question. Does anybody know this one? I need to, I need to find out from Jermaine. Does the Masters confiscate smartwatch? Confiscate smartwatches now? I don't know. I don't know if I had an Apple Watch when I went two years ago. I've worn mine every year and not had a problem. Because you were there. poor then. Now yeah. you're making big bucks. That's true. That's true. Um, no, you can have one as a, it's a phone. You know, you don't have to have your phone beside. Yeah. Never been, but I mean, I, I would ass- I would assume so. If but if y'all never into that problem. I haven't before, but who knows? I mean, I do remember trying to go in one time to shoot a practice round. I took one of my. Big lenses, you know, just a eighty to two hundred. They're like, no, got It's that lens is too big. So, you know, I'll just take it off. I right, um, any other names we need to know about? Anybody else we need to cover for the uh, upcoming visits before we get into the questions? Uh, I don't think so. Visits. I mean, again, we're going to be we're adding guys throughout the week. Um, as far as the rest of the week, I mean, Bear Tenney is scheduled to visit on on Wednesday. And that's the guy we've kind of mentioned as if Elias Williams ends up flipping, which is a pretty decent possibility. He's kind of like the top target after that. Um, so that's an interesting one to watch. Uh, I confirmed actually while we were sitting here that Donaz Walton, a 2026 running back, is going to be in Athens tomorrow. Uh, let's see. He's ranked pretty high, I think, 2026. And actually, there you go, Roddy from Carrollton. Uh, yeah, number eight running back in the country out of Central High School in Carrollton. So that's another in-state guy to know. And then, yeah, the big day, of course, is uh, is Saturday for sure. All right, we got a bunch of questions we need to get to. But uh, first, I want to mention our friends over at the Rogue Shop. They are the reason we are part. Uh, we, are, we are here. Uh, they The Rogue Shop is was founded. We had them on our show not too long ago. Uh they were founded by a former college football player and uh, veteran who was looking for a way to ease chronic pain. He had a lot of pain from his sports days and his army days. So he didn't want to get uh, addicted to certain narcotics and, uh, you know, the opioids and things. And after a while they stopped giving them to you. So he found out about the anti-inflammatory properties of cabinoids, got into it, started making them. And he and his wife do a fantastic job. Jermaine, you can see right there on the bottom of the screen. If you actually go on their site, you can chat with her. Uh, uh, It's an actual person. It's it's two people that run this whole thing, you know. Uh, So check them out when you get a chance. Use promo code Bulldogs10. They've got topicals that I've used their uh, topical for the uh, my meniscus in my left knee, which is shot all to hell. CBD oils. I have people friends that swear by them. They even have a CBD CBD oil for your pups. So if your uh, pup's having uh, issues, you can try their ones for that. And they have Delta 8 and Delta 9 products. Again, if you have a drug, if you're, where you work has a drug testing policy, okay, uh, don't be the, uh, don't try their Delta 8. <laughs> don't do that because it can make you test positive and you can get in trouble there. So you don't want to be that guy. Uh, let me do this one here. And you can see that we're, they, the stuff is pretty. Um, stuff is pretty good. They have chocolate ones. They have their nerd bites. They have their uh, uh, fruit flavored ones. Check out our friends at the Rogue Shop. Use promo code Bulldogs10 and you will be happy that you did. Oh, look, there's just Jed. 
I like that. We'll leave Jed on there all the time. Yeah, perfect. I like that. All right, uh, real, let's go to the questions real fast. Let's pull them up here. Our first one will be from Space uh, Pope 3. Do you think there will be any recruit decisions between G-Day and May 31st official visit weekend? I mean, odds would tell you yes, just because that's a month and a half. But I think, yeah, I, I would say so. Because I think you, you get these guys who think, okay, I'm going to take all my spring visits and then decide. And then you get the guys who say, I want to take my summer officials and decide. So I think there will be some, a couple maybe, and nobody in particular necessarily. Um, we mentioned Ryan Montgomery earlier as a guy who was slated to commit. I don't think he will commit to Georgia, but that's a guy who has kind of decided he wants to get things over with before the summer. Um, I mean, last year we saw Quintavious Johnson in May, I believe. Uh, or no, he, he was in the summer. I don't know. There, w I think there will be probably a couple. We just don't necessarily know who yet. Um, yeah, a, I, would, I, would, I would take the field too because yeah. so I'll get April 13th to May 31st. That's six weeks. Yeah. So. And we and the dominoes fall. So uh, Matt Zoller's picks this weekend. Well, Ryan Montgomery's like, okay, well, you're going here. That takes that one off my list. You know, I'm going here. Someone else does. It. It's the same with offensive tackles, top wide receivers, top cornerbacks. One guy makes a decision and the others start falling into place. So I could definitely see a situation where. You guys just one. You could get a you could get a commitment to Penn State that could cause someone to go to Ohio State, that cause someone else to pick Tennessee, and the fourth guy winds up saying, "Okay, well, I don't want to play in Tennessee." I was thinking about Tennessee and Georgia. If that guy's going to Tennessee, I'm going to Georgia. Mm -hmm. And you're like, it all started because one guy picked Penn State. So, in other words, it's easier to pick the field. I believe Christian Garrett is looking to commit. I mean, this was back in January. I think he told me he told me before the summer of or around his uh, spring ball of his uh, senior year. So possibly watch out for that one. Um, Christian Gass, another in-state kid that Georgia offered right down the road, um, kind of near where Roddy, you grew up at Eastside High School in uh, in Covington. He's he's looking to uh commit he tweeted earlier today that he wants to commit before his senior year and i remember when georgia first off offered him um he he was very high on him and he said that he wanted to get it done i think before um the start the before the start of uh because ghsa starts summer ball technically like the second week the first week first monday or second monday in june so i think that uh that's one to watch as well those were good. Uh, let's go to the question here from Medical Dog. He said, there's been a lot of talk about UGA's NIL situation and some wild solutions pitched. Yeah. There have been some good solutions pitched, too. We even mentioned one on this show where Kirby can come on and talk to the fans directly and get a bunch of super chats going on. Or we'll put up the logo, the uh, link to Classic City Collective, and people can go straight to and donate. Uh, we'll be happy to exchange that in, you know, or happy to do that in exchange for him coming on our show. That'd be great. Uh, where do you think UGA sits with NIL amongst the key title competitors? Are we number one, the best, two, one of the best, three, middle of the road, four, lagging behind? I'll take that one, medical dog. Yeah. I, I, explain don't, this. Go ahead. I, I don't think it's the best, but I don't think it's near as bad as, as it's made out to be. Um, yeah. I, I would say, I would say uh, between two and three, um, I would I would say uh, I don't I don't think it uh, it's made out to be like we need money because if we're going to you know keep competing I, I don't I don't think Georgia's necessarily lacking on money but I don't think they're as high as they would like to be necessarily uh which is number 1. So uh uh yeah that's where I stand. Yeah, I'd say the same thing between 2 and 3. Just right um, among the best obviously good enough um, but yeah, not not what what some other schools are for sure. I think it's more so how they choose to to yeah. use it, That's and um, I think there's a there's a fine line between the way some others use it, which lands lands some top tier prospects. It it, it does. It, it it's made Georgia miss on several prospects. No um, but I think it's all about how this is. Uh, how they choose to, how they choose to use it and um 
And, you know, I, I think, I think in my personal opinion, I think Georgia goes about it the right way. Um, I, I think they go, they go about it the right way. I think Kirby's try. He, he's not building for tomorrow. He's building for the future. And it, you can take one kid and, and throw a, mo- a money bag at him and you're building for tomorrow. But I think Kirby is in it for the long haul and he's not going to, he's not going to fall into that situation. And I know Kirby is not the one handing out the money. It's the collective, but at the same time, uh, you know, he, they're not going to, the collective is not going to throw uh, half the, half their collective at one player uh, while some others might do that. I think it's right there at three, but I'm, I'm in agreement with Trent that, you know, you look at, you look at, you know, the skill position every, you know, look at all these guys, Jeremiah Smith from the last cycle, um, at wide receiver and running back. And, you know, Georgia's going to go and I think they're not going to, you know, put all that money and stock into a, a high school kid when they can go get a proven player in the portal. Go get Dominic Lovett. Go get Ra Ra Thomas. Go get Trevor Etienne. And a couple of years ago, go get the go get the cornerback from Clemson um, that came, came in, Darion Kendrick. So I, I'm not going to name any names, but I had a, had a, uh, a very good, a very high person up and, and said that said that Georgia doesn't have to land a Juju Lewis to win a national championship. Other schools do. And that's, that's the that's difference great. between Georgia and other schools. They have other schools have to use a big allotment of NIL to land a top caliber kid. Georgia doesn't need that top caliber kid to win a national championship. True, but one of Georgia's – one of the reasons they don't need a guy like that is because they're deeper than anybody else. And to answer this question, I'll put it to you this way, Medical Dog. If you are a big money donor, you've been asked to give money to UGA for – and oh, the sheer millions that have rolled in in the past two weeks to the Athletic Association, not to the NIL. That's different. Georgia Athletic Association cannot take its TV money and put it towards NIL. Kirby Smart can't take his money and put it towards NIL. They're not allowed to do that. People keep saying, well, Kirby should pay him. He can't. The, the university should pay him. They can't. They, they can change the rules, then maybe they can, but right now you can't do it. Make them employees. If the NCAA and the, all the presidents agree to do that, yeah, but it's, that's not the way it is right now. So right now, when you have a player go down, Georgia's able to put in somebody else who's pretty good better than a lot of other players out there. But their starting 22, starting 44 are really good, and you're able to afford those guys. Right now, Georgia is sixth or seventh in the in the SEC when it comes to NIL things. I know last month they were hurting to, mat, to meet all the promises that the NIL had made, the, the classes they collective had made, to its current its current obligations. It was tight. It was it was very it was a close run thing. So it's not like they've got this huge war chest. To your point, they don't go out and spend a ton of money on a freshman. Caleb Downs coming to Georgia, he was going to get as a as a big transfer. He was going to get thirty thousand dollars a month. He's going to Ohio State for a hundred thousand dollars a month. So Ohio State went all in after losing the third time to Michigan and went and got the best safety in America. They're not going. Not everybody can do that on every guy. So Georgia has enough money to keep all its starters. It has enough money to keep a lot of its second team guys. It's the second half of that second team and your third green guys who are your depth, who are the, the players we talk about. Uh, Jermaine King's in here saying, look, uh, uh, you know, Makai Muse blew it up last year. Who's going to be the Makai Muse this year at G-Day? I don't know. Somebody could blow it up, but there's a good possibility if you have a great G-Day and you're not one of the – top 44, you go in the portal because you can go to Eastern Kentucky for all of a sudden make a lot more money. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple of those. Georgia's depth, it's role players could get picked off this team come April 15th when Georgia says, look, I I know what the market value is on you because you're a Georgia player with one year, two year, three years of experience. There are a lot of teams that will pay a lot of money for you because they're more desperate. You know, Ohio State was desperate. Through a huge chunk of money at Cape, uh, Missouri, desperate. There are teams that are Ole Miss, 
desperate. They're, they're as desperate as Georgia fans were 2020, 2021 before the championship, after 40 years of just, you know, being made fun of when people say 1980 and you just took it like it was a, a slap in the face. You'd have paid anything if it was available back then to do it. So I'm just telling you, this is from the high. Kirby has spoken three or four times. And he did so again at the gala. The gala raised $1.5 million. Um, there was a big donor recently came through with like a $3 million gift. They might wind up having money, but as of last month, Kirby has spoken to three or four different insider groups and people who are used who go to these things all the time because they're big donors. They said, I've never heard Kirby talk the way he talks now. The entire time it's about NIL and how badly he needs our help. I hope that answers your question, Medical Dog. And again, Medical Dog, uh, what I was saying, all the money that came in, huge amounts of money came in for the to move up in the points structure so that you could buy those new seats that they're putting in where the press box used to be. These are exclusive seats. They're, un, you know, it's, it's a nice thing. But to buy those, you have to be, they're going to offer them to whoever's given the most money, number one, whoever's given the second most, number two. And people have been jockeying and donating tons of money. So, the athletic association is flush with cash. They're getting a ton of it. But now all those donors are also being asked to come up with $100 million so Georgia can have a medical school. You're a medical dog. I'm sure you know about that. So the big donors are saying, look, I'm getting hit up for, if I want these seats, I got to pay through the nose. I'm being asked to fund baseball. I'm being asked to fund basketball. I'm being asked to fund a medical center. Uh, it, it, that you can't keep going to the same well. Some of those people are like, look, you know, I'm paying for this kid and this kid. Just can't do it. So that, that's where it stands right now. That desperation you talk about also brings uh, a hot seat to coaches. Um, I mean, you, you, you look sure at does. you look at Jimbo Fisher, for example. I mean, he landed that class in, in uh, the $30 million class, but that brought on, if you don't win with this class, you're gone. Yep. And I think this is a similar type situation. I'm not saying Lane Kiffin to be gone, but he is in a win must now the, with the transfer portal class that he just brought in. Amen. Like you, 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 you win or you're gone. And I, and I think they're in a situation where that is. And I think Missouri is, is, you know, going all in on, on some players. Um, you, you, it just puts a, puts a load of pressure on the, on the coach to win now. And mm-hmm. I mean, all coaches have that, but it, it gets greater when you, when, when, you got donors bucks on the line and no, you're right. uh, they, they want that return on investment trend. Yep. If I'm the guy that gave a hundred thousand dollars so that uh, Caleb Downs could be the face of my business and he's not doing stuff. I'm mad at him. I'm mad at Ohio state. And I'm furious. And then you come to me next week after, or next year after we've lost to Michigan for the fourth time in a row, I'm going to yep. tell you to go pound sand. So you're right. And I, and I want that coach fired because I gave a hundred grand mm-hmm. $1.2 million and it didn't happen. So you're right. And again, if you're at Ole Miss or you're Missouri or you're any other team, if you're at Kentucky and you're like yeah, football, that is, and you're like, yeah, we didn't win the SEC this year, but no one expects us to because we just can't get, we don't have the same players as Georgia and Alabama and Ohio State. Well, now you don't have that excuse anymore. So to your point, like, hey, Lane, we gave you all the players. We went out and bought <laughs> Nolan. We, we went out and bought a bunch of guys. A whole defense. Yeah, a whole defense. And you didn't <laughs> win with them? That's on you, brother. But uh, C. Buck Levitt says, how many wide receivers will UGA take in this class and who are the prospects the staff want the most at the position? Yeah, I mean, I would say probably three, maybe four. Um, you know, when you, when you talk about guys they want they want the most, it's C.J. Wiley, it's Travis Smith, it's uh, Taylor Taylor, Javon Boggs has now jumped up that list. We talked about him last week, um, the recent – Oh, I think Ohio State decommit who visited. Um, yeah, that's a good class right there. Joshua Moore is one. I mean, and we haven't even mentioned guys like Eugene Hilton is, is high on Georgia. Uh, Jordan Allen, a guy from Buford, is really good. Uh, you know, oh, guys, Thomas phenomenal. Blackshear out of, I want to say, Calvary Day in Savannah. Like, there's a lot of guys out there who Georgia is in on and that like Georgia a lot. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think definitely three receivers – Maybe four if it's the right four. Um, but again, like you said earlier, Lance, they have Georgia has shown that they they are they would like to leave a spot open maybe for a uh, for a portal guy come uh, come January. 
And if you notice how Georgia's recruited, you know, the past two years to y'all, uh, to what you're talking about is, uh, they, when it comes to NIL, Kirby wants proven guys at the wide receiver position, yep. and um, and, and that's not that's not a position where uh, he would much rather you allocate the money in the NIL to NIL to uh, the trenches than it is to uh, wide receiver, and because he knows he can go out and he can land one or two wide receivers in the portal. Uh, after one year and never miss a beat in his offense. So um, I, I think you see three, like you said, maybe four, depending on who it is. Um, but, you know, you, you're going to hold up, uh, ho- hold open one or two spots for the portal every year at the wide receiver position. Oh, you're right, which leaves up the, the question there from uh, our, uh, our Hall 55 is, is how many O-line and D-line in this cycle? And to your point, you can find great wide receivers. They're, I don't say they're a dime a dozen, but there's a lot of them out there. But, you know, uh, uh, Cy earlier was saying, well, George needs an elite defensive tackle. There weren't that many in the transfer portal this year, and there were a ton of guys in the portal. Mm-hmm. Just, it's tough to find great offensive linemen and great defensive linemen in the portal. So how many do they take in the recruiting class? Because you saw Kirby, he's besides, what, 11 offensive and defensive linemen in this past class? Uh, yeah, five. See, I think five six, offensive six linemen linemen. on one side. I can't remember which switch. Yeah, six offensive linemen and five defense linemen. Yeah, so he's like, well, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna sign a crap ton of them and try to get them now and develop them. So, but to that, but that brings up the question: How many does he go for this year? I think you're gonna see a similar number. Um, okay. I think you're you're. you're you might see one or two less, um, but I think you're going to see close to that ten number between between the two. I think you're going to see uh, at least five offensive linemen. I think you're going to see four or five defensive linemen, not counting edge guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think you'll see, uh, yeah, I, I would say five and four um, would be a safe number right now. Maybe even five and five. Uh, Roger Dodge says everybody wants an offensive or defensive lineman in the transfer portal. Lots of times, and the choices are slim. A good good offensive lineman play, and that's where it's hard. That that's where Georgia has benefited the most from, like you said, stacking talent. Is they have eight to nine very good offensive linemen every year that you can that you can mix in and and and. You know, if somebody's hurt or somebody needs to take a game off, you've seen that uh, because they're not 100%. You can just fill in and, and never miss a beat. Uh, I think – Warren Sawyer was hurt. Warren McClendon was hurt. Uh, Marius Mims was hurt. I mean, talking first, second round, third round guys, uh, Georgia didn't miss a beat until until that last game when Mims went down. That was a little bit tougher, but that's because they had built a lot of it at that point. But you're right. I mean – in the in the Richt era, if you lost one of those top guys, you were replacing him with somebody who was a huge drop. Please, please continue. And, and that's my point with the transfer portal. You're not going to find a transfer portal offensive lineman as good as Georgia has in their top eight, um, oftentimes. And that's just the way Georgia's been able to build the depth in their classes. The only thing that I worry about, again, with Georgia's NIL, and we'll get to uh, showing us question there. I use this example. When you have three really good guards, you have a Tate Radledge, a Micah Morris, and a Dylan Fairchild. And let's say Dylan Fairchild like, look, I'm the odd man out here. Those two guys got the spots locked. I'm going to try something else. He would be a one of the top guys in the portal. Every school would be trying to get him. And let's say you know, Georgia just didn't have enough money to keep him. That's not, I'm again, this is just completely hypothetical. Dylan doesn't seem like that kind of guy, nor does Micah, nor does uh, uh, and, Tate. But if you lose a guy like that, either you don't have the money to get it or you don't have the, the options to replace him because there's just not another guy like that. So you got to have enough money to keep your best players. And, and we don't even mention Xavier Trust, who started a lot of games at guard. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's just, you know, and you, they've got, but to your point, he's got new guys that can step in. I mean, we we keep hearing about you know Calhoun. We saw Nair Daniels lose a bunch of weight, and you're waiting on Jamal Merriweather to be the guy, you know. And it's uh, they, they, they 
So if they do lose him, they, they're going to replace him. So I'm with you. I like how they, he builds he builds inside out. He said it from his first press conference on. All right, show notes question says another NIL question. We keep hearing that the Classic City Collective and UGA need more small donors, but is there any talking about giving us potential small donors, something we've begged for for years, and that's more program access like more in-person practice or streaming content? The only fundraising ideas we're hearing coming out of Classic City Collective are high-dollar events like hunting trips, the, the gala this past week weekend. Feels like we're on uh, one five-star recruit decommit, and we're going to church for fish fries and car washes. Uh, showing up, that has been a question uh, I was asked. You know, how does Georgia reach more? Because again, the donor fatigue is real. If and again, we had a guy come on our board. You read it. This is one of Georgia's top donors. He said, "Look, I get hit up constantly. It's not just for." Georgia football players, it's for basketball players, it's for baseball players, it's for tennis and soccer and track and field. And then the athletic association itself needs money to operate, you know, to do what they do. And then the medical, I, I give to the University of Georgia, the academic side. You know, so if you could, if you, there's 93,000 people in the stadium. If each one of those guys, guys and girls was given $21 a month, changes the entire outlook. But to your point, I said, the best way you get that, bring back picture day, bring back countdown to kickoff. Remember Kirby Smart used to have like one open practice a year in the stadium and people go sit in the stands, you know, give them sort of access. There's hardly any access and you demand money. It's, it's BS. Mm -hmm. Give them, yeah. do more outreach, give, give them something instead of, Hey, we'll give you a sticker or a hat. My dad and I were just literally talking about, I mean, even back when Don and Rick early his picture, picture day or signing day, I mean, you could get them for, you know, like, like, like an hour or two. And then you could watch practice. My dad and I were literally talking about that today and, and stuff. I, I completely Here's the thing, you could do the, the picture day. You could do countdown to kickoff and you say, look, uh, it, you know, it used to be free. Okay. We're, we're not doing that anymore, but well, here's the thing. How many, Regular fans, do you think have been inside the indoor practice facility? Have they ever had an open day? You can walk, it's, it is a public university. You can walk into any damn building on campus, walk around, but you can't walk into the, the, the football practice facility. It's just a sport. I can understand not being able to go into the law offices, you know, or the main campus or something like that. Well, you know? And not only that, you look at how they have the the practice fields now they've got the the black tarp up all the way around the fences and you know i was talking with some people about that the other day and there was i was like yeah you can't even get a a a accidental peek at practice if you're you know jogging or whatever um you know that's that. really well, sure, is but that's there's there's so much it, it's very you know it, it's it's so much different from a from a openness Stamp yeah, I, I get not let them see practice. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But yeah, it's, that's that's just kind of at least walk in the building. And so yeah. if you could say, hey, we're having an open house, or you could do tours. Just come mm -hmm. through tour the building. It's $25 a person for a tour. People would line up down the streets. And then you say, okay, uh, we're going to have a, a picture day or a countdown to kickoff. All the players will be there. The coaches will be there. Um, each autograph you get is 10 bucks. Or you can get the pack for $100 a person. You can get as many signatures as you want. You know, here's your armband. You know, We've got food. You can at least come in. It won't be hot. We've covered the ones that were outside on those practice fields in the middle of June. They were 1,000 degrees and put on by the stench comes, and you were just out there melting. But people still showed up by the thousands just to be able to hand their post around and get it signed by a bunch of uh, current and former players. So I'm with them. Give them the access. Uh, anyway, we've talked a little. Yeah, we did it again. We went too. We went too long. <laughs> yeah. Hell, even I send out confetti. <laughs> it's in a lot of that stuff. Uh, towards the facility, we built. Yeah, or do something with the battery. It would pay for itself. In other words, there's a lot of money left on the table, and that helps you not only in keeping your current players, but it helps you on the recruiting trail. So, we could take out the. Well, so and so dropped a giant bag on him because Georgia could say, "Hey, whatever your offer, your best offer will match it. Come play at Georgia." So, anyway, that's all the time we have for this week, folks. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Sorry we went long. I know everybody wants to get to the game. It's nine twelve. What's the tip off? Nine twenty. Yep. 
Yep. Lance has got a thousand dollars riding on this game. So don't tell don't tell anyone that. <laughs> and with that, we will see you folks next week. Y'all take.